in regards to actually fortifying our provinces. So that is a nice line there. Build a great palace. Monarchs were often struggling with ways to subdue the nobility. The rise of firearms reduced the nobles' roles as warriors, but left them with, in the eyes of the monarchs, too much idle time. Some monarchs created new great palaces with elaborate court rituals to dazzle the nobles and keep them occupied. Versailles is the greatest expression of this movement. Of course we will build a palace. Prestige and legitimacy? Losing some money? I think we'll do it. Build a great palace has happened to us. So we fortified the we fortified the border. I think that probably will be good enough for now. And we've converted some more heretics, which is always good. Are you actually progressing? No. Okay, we need we need something. We need increasingly narrow-minded or something like that to pop so that we can actually progress with that whole conversion on the hardest province that's left to us. Or, if we could just get a Inquisitor as one of the options for here, I would be eternally grateful. You hear me, game? I would be eternally grateful. Absolutely, positively, eternally grateful. But of course, now it won't do that. Why would it help me? <laughs> uh, can we name anybody else as a rival, apart from the people that we already have? Well, the people being just Russia. Uh, let's make the Timurids our rival as well. That should increase our power projection, power projection, just a little bit. Fortification has been neglected, let it fall, or let's do something and lose some tradition. We're just going to let it fall. It won't really matter all that much. It doesn't actually take away any fortifications that you've built. It just makes the area a little bit less likely to stand against defense, uh, against attacks, rather. My apologies. So, you still haven't decided to side with anybody. That's really, really, really interesting. And no, I still don't want that idea. I should probably build some more courthouses as well. Seeing as we have the opportunity to do so. And I think the British Isles, as one of our first conquests, after we gained a lot of power, and the place that we kind of went to in Crusader Kings, This was a, our main power base. This and France. Most of the other places we kind of just conquered as we went along, when you think about it. Um, let's see now. I think Spain... Well, what was added to the Empire first? This whole area was basically the first stretch of conquests. And then, if I recall correctly, we kind of expanded a little bit into Spain as we were... Uh, trying to get people to help us out and trying to get control of the Byzantine Empire so we've got another Casas Belli on the Timurids I'm just gonna go and build courthouses all along here I'm gonna do this coast as well so I remember that we took Portugal and other such places early on and then eventually we filled in the rest of this but we, st we seem to have enough points that we can grab all of them. I'm going to take to the administration. Let's get Madrid and Toledo all done. And chop. The Timurids have declared war on Yarkand. They cite reconquest as their Casas Belli. Oh good, we're increasingly narrow-minded. Yes. I will gladly take that. Are all of these increasing now? Thank you. So they've attacked Yarkand. I don't actually know where that is. I think that that might be a nation around here-ish in the Afghani area, but don't quote me on that because I've actually got no idea. A comet was sighted. Oh god. So in Victoria 2, this is a very, very good thing. In EU4, not so much. So <laughs> a comet was sighted. Peasants are always superstitious, and the appearance of a comet in the sky has caused panic among our people. They are convinced that this is a sign that the end of times is near, or that something bad is going to happen in the near future. So there's a lot of references in this particular, this particular event, or at least things that I see as references. This one, Twin-Tailed twin Comet, is kind of a callback, I think to the Warhammer universe in which uh, Twin-Tailed Comet is pretty much the harbinger of all that is bad 
because, <laughs> because while it brings Sigmar, it also uh, sends the world into a kind of tailspin for the next 2,500 years. Uh, it is an omen. I actually don't know what I would call that. The end is nigh. That's, you know, obviously a reference back to doom and gloom sayers. The economy fools. I don't know if this is actually a reference, but it reminds me a little bit. Some people who are watching these videos might not actually be old enough to remember this. Some of you will be, because I know that you're older than I am. But this just reminds me of Bill Clinton, actually. Where uh, one of the things that came out when he was doing his first run for president was somebody somebody had written, I can't remember if it was him or somebody on his campaign staff, but somebody had written, it's the economy, stupid, on some official briefing paper, and it became noticed. I wish I lived in more enlightened times is a callback, of course, to Victoria 2, because in Victoria 2, it says, we live in such enlightened times. But it's the economy, fools! And black news indeed. Stability has dropped, but we should still convert our nation to Catholicism, and as soon as we have the ability to do so, I'm going to boost this back up. So we need 137 power. I might not need to do it, actually, in hindsight, because these places are converting in a fairly quick clip. Um, to the administration, or to so a thousand flowers. Administration. 91 prestige is alright, I'm, I'm okay with that. Now, Polotsk, do you still hate us immensely? You do, and you still won't marry into our family. This is disappointing. I am disappointed. Because I really wish that I could marry in before Cecilia actually comes onto the throne. Unfortunately, it is not to be so. How is Poland doing, by the by? They're doing quite well, actually. Our... Uh, is he our pick? He is our pick. Jersey to Harcourt is up and ready to go when Imram gives up the ghost. He's age 60. So Jersey is probably going to come to the throne fairly quickly. How old is Jersey? Age 48. Eh, that's not too bad. And we've converted another province. So let's continue on with our conversions. And yet another province. Hooray! 47 months is amazing. Compared to all that stagnation that we had just before. The whole, we're not going to let you convert anything because you don't have an Inquisitor, you don't have any Cardinals on your staff when running the country, you don't have anything. And our artist Simon Matthias is dead. Do we have an Inquisitor, please? <sighs> National Unrest versus Yearly Prestige. Prestige, because I don't want it to drop as quick. So Tiberius Ma Michael, welcome to the team. I hope you enjoy your stay. We won't kick you off until you die, or if an Inquisitor comes up. If an Inquisitor comes up, he's getting the boot, because, you know, Inquisitor's much, 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 much better for the running of your country. Gotland is doing surprisingly little. I would have thought that Gotland would be actually doing stuff, but they're currently in a coalition against us. Is Polotsk still? They are. I'm guessing that when the aggressive expansion finally goes away, they might get out of it. Because they are willing to trust us. Gotland, obviously. Not even slightly. Gotland deeply distrusts the Roman Empire. These guys trust us to uphold our bargains. Norway? Yeah, Norway actually does trust us to uphold our bargains. That's very interesting. Probably because we returned a lot of territory to them. Which kind of makes sense, actually. How does Poland feel about us? Poland is willing to trust us somewhat. Russia? They're probably... Yeah, we haven't really done anything wrong to them. We haven't done badly by them. We haven't invaded them or crushed them ridiculously again and again and again. So they're fairly willing to trust us, all things considered. How are they doing on tech? Ah, oh, really? Yeah, they've just advanced up. So we actually aren't ahead of them as much as we were. That is a damn shame. It's possible that we will never be ahead of Russia enough for them to westernize, which would be very unfortunate. Um, I'm going to go with two so a thousand flowers, and I completely forgot to boost our stability. There we go. Stability has been boosted. Uh, what about technology? How are we doing there? Are we below a thousand? We are below a thousand. So I'm going to let these just advance and collect up all the power that we need, and it will help if I unpause so we can do that. 
Are you below a thousand? You are too. Okay, I'm just gonna leave all of our power. I'm gonna try and get Russia to westernize. Because that would really, really help. Polotsk has left the, uh, the coalition against us and they are willing to royal marriage us. Hooray. And I believe they just announced Scotland as their rival. Somebody announced Scotland as a rival. Maybe it was Poland. I don't know. It was somebody. And they have a new start holder. Death of a merchant. One of the greatest and richest men in the Roman Empire has died without an heir. He was a well-known patron of religion and the arts. The state needs the money or... Use them as he would have. We'll use them as he would have because we have a ton of money already. And let's see if we got anything good. I doubt it. We got an artist. We got Marcus Raphael. Stability cost modifier is nice, but I'd rather have the prestige at the moment. Actually, you know, I lie. I actually would rather have Marcus Raphael because Marcus Raphael is a three. So yes, let's replace him. And we've converted two more provinces, which is good. So let's convert these two up and continue on. And we're now at 118% religious unity. So soon enough, we'll have the full 125%. Once we get to 125%, regardless of if the Reformation has actually triggered, though it's up to 74.8% now, and it's only been about 10 years since we last checked. So it's going on at a fairly rapid clip. Once we reach full religious unity, I will take ecumenism, regardless of whether or not we actually have had the Counter-Reformation happen. What is going on here? Gotland are noble rebels, the first noble army. That's intriguing, because the start holder is right over here. They do have armies, but I'm guessing that perhaps they don't have the ships to move them, and Polotsk isn't letting them through their territory. I actually kind of approve of this. I wouldn't mind seeing Gotland as a noble republic. Actually, are they a noble republic already? They're a merchant republic. A noble republic is basically the same thing, except the uh, the noble houses swap between themselves who's in charge every once in a while. It's a little bit different. Polotsk wants an alliance. I'm not going to agree because I don't want one. And Polotsk... Ah, Polotsk has no legal heir, and Cecilia is age 30. So, oh, what? Wait, what? On monarch death, Polotsk gets inherited by the Roman Empire. I don't want that. I do not want that, not even slightly. I just want to put someone of my... Of my... <sighs> is it because they've got really, really low prestige? I don't know. I don't want to inherit Polotsk. That might be something that we have to deal with. Maybe. Show Elan. Elan. Our strong emphasis on the offensive gives our country's army a feeling of strength because attack is always the best form of defense. Our men charge fearlessly into battle, knowing that victory will be theirs. Go for the eyes. The morale of army goes up, and I like that. That's really unfortunate that they've got such low prestige. I have never actually seen that happen where you skip the whole becoming part of your dynasty and just going straight to the, yep, you get to swallow them whole. I don't want that. I really don't. That would be unfortunate. Hmm. I guess we'll see. This... This depresses me somewhat. I was thinking, oh yeah, set Polotsk up, set a Dahakor on the throne. We probably won't have to worry too much about it, and bad things have occurred. Though, they probably will have the chance to get a new heir. She's only 30. And 30 is pretty young. I mean, it's not impossible to have an heir fairly quickly. So, Anastasia is 54 right now. Hadrian is not quite her equal. He's better at fighting and diplomacy than he is at administration. But administration isn't everything. And we do have a fair bit of uh, 
Monarch power. Invested into all these things. This is almost ready to go up as well. Good, good, good. They have a point. I'm going to ignore them because I want my military technology and I want my diplomatic technology. And once again, the old school is not necessarily wrong, but in this particular case, I have the benefit of actually knowing what goes on in the world and knowing that the gun actually becomes very, very significant. So I know they are wrong and I will take the prestige hit to prove it. Come on, you're almost there. You're almost there. No, I still don't want it. You're almost there too. Let's get the galley ass. Galleys were light and small. It was very difficult to mount cannons on them. The galley ass was a larger vessel. God damn it. The galley ass was a larger vessel capable of carrying a broadside of cannons like a man of war. To compensate for this extra weight, galley asses would be equipped with additional sails. So we enabled the galley ass and the brig. Cool, cool. Commedia del Arte. I, I don't know. Italian was never my strong, my uh, my strong subject back in school. Hear ye, hear ye! Let loose Pantaloon, Harlequin, and all other stock characters of the traditional Commedia del Art, Arte, on your unsuspecting population and watch as they are entertained by the antics and shenanigans. Shenanigans? Evil shenanigans. A good piece of comedy can make anyone forget for a while that, there is, that their everyday lives are wasted away laboring under the yokes of tyrannical rulers. Plus, it's fun. Make it happen. We get the Commedia del Arte until 1564. Nice. Giving us one yearly prestige for the cost of 10 admin power and 633 ducats. Or pointless distraction to lose some prestige. Um, uh, it's pretty obvious that we make it happen. Nice. And that means that we should actually be in the positive. Well, 0 0.27 loss a year is pretty good. And we get Latin Caracol Cavalry with level 14 of military tech. Which is good. So let's pause it here for a moment. My Imperatrix Ali has declared war upon their new enemy Kaffa. They cite conquest as their Casus Belli. I don't actually know where Kaffa is. Apparently, I don't know where Kaffa is. I don't even know that it exists, except for the fact that I know it exists. I'm imagining that means that it's over here somewhere in the Terra Incognita. Our military technology is advanced. We have got the Tenale. Tenale? It was difficult to fire around curved walls, thus, once attackers got close enough to the fortification, the ability of the other parts of the defences to provide flanking fire was nullified. The development of star-shaped bastions allowed every part of the wall to be supported from the other parts. So this is basically an early star fort, which is what you'll see a lot in games like Empire Total War. It's also allowed us to get Latin Caracol Cavalry, which we will have a look at now. So the Latin Caracol Cavalry, in the late 16th and early 17th century, the most common combat formation for Western European cavalry was the caracol, which could be employed in two ways. So caracol cavalry generally carried pistols, if I remember correctly. With the first method, the first rank of the cavalry formation charged frontally against the enemy, the cavalrymen firing their weapons at the range of 30 to 50 paces. Then they turned round again and retreat, returned to the rear of the normal... English. English is really, really difficult today, apparently. Then they turned around again and returned to the rear of the formation and became the last rank. So they basically rotate, kind of like how uh, in the Tertio the musketmen would fire and then they'd retreat back through the ranks and the next rank would move up, fire. You get the idea. It's kind of the idea of a rolling volley. The following rank would charge in the same way, fire at the enemy and return to the rear. With this formation, the first rank was always charging while the other ranks were loading and waiting their turn to charge. Another method was to charge in single file, firing when the enemies were on the right, and then continuing around in a circular motion, all the while reloading and returning to reform the lines in a continuous attack. The first one is more often the one that you would know about, though. But Latin Caracol Cavalry, not bad. Together with Tertio Infantry, they made the world tremble a little bit. Just a little bit. So I'm thinking that a good spot to end this will probably be 1565. I'm getting a little bit tired. It's, it's It wouldn't be that stressful, you'd think, playing video games, but it's, it's a little bit tiring. It is a little bit tiring, and that sounds 
awfully, uh, awfully conceited to say we lost our courses. Cassus Ballet against Russia as well. It seems awfully conceited to say, oh, I'm feeling a bit tired because I've been playing video games for a while. But it, it, it's a little bit of burnout, and if I'm not having fun because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather because I'm a bit tired, and I am currently a little bit sick, I'm hoping that it's not showing through all that much in the voice. Rebels broke something. Rebels broke Lithuania. What? Lithuania has collapsed. How so? It's right there. Kingdom. Oh, I guess they reformed into administrative monarchy? I don't know. I really do not. But uh, as I say, if I'm not having fun because I'm feeling a bit under the weather, then you guys aren't going to enjoy watching the videos. And I want you guys to enjoy watching the videos because I love EU4. And I love the idea of crafting a story. And this is the first time that I've done a grand campaign and I'm getting to share it with other people because a lot of my friends don't particularly like grand campaigns. They don't particularly like Paradox games. And while screenshot LPs are great, I do really like the, uh, the the kind of more interaction. I guess you do get a lot of interaction with screenshot LPs as well, but I like the the uh, the vocal interaction, if that makes more sense. You can hear my voice, and I like to think that makes it a little bit special. <laughs> Gotland has announced Poland as its new rival. And Gotland has finally left the military coalition that was against us. They understand that we pose no threat. Well, we do, we just don't particularly feel like antagonizing them right now. While the poor state of the Roman currency is becoming even more troubling for us, the common people have started to look to other solutions. Oh, this is because we haven't bothered to deal with the inflation. This is beautiful. I love this game for all of the wonderful things. So inflation's gotten to the point where bartering is becoming again something we have to deal with many are growing wary of the use of money and avoid it wherever possible reverting to the old means of trade like barter systems perhaps their concerns are misplaced but if we do not act swiftly we may lose our grip on the economy and the country itself so you can bankrupt yourself by not dealing with inflation i don't think we have to worry too much about it ourselves but if one of these lowers inflation i will probably take it Seek the advice of our best economists to stop this by any means, which loses us to inflation and costs us 100 admin power. Ugh. I don't want to. I don't. I really, really don't. But I guess I kind of have to. Or, let us hope... Well, what happens if I use... What happens if I do it independently? 75 to lo yeah okay no nope. we're doing it independently 75 to reduce it by two is better than 100 to reduce it by two so let's do that now just to bring it down a little bit a golden era for culture with peace in our country the great musicians artists and poets are rejoicing in the capabilities of entertaining their betters this era of cultural enlightenment is definitely improving the mood of the roman empire this is great great gain some prestige i don't mind if i do Prestige is always good. Prestige is always welcome in my tree fort. Now when will this be done? Oh, perfect. Okay. So once we get to admin technology level 14, that's where I will end the video. So in about two years time for, the, for this little clock here. Country before faith. We will trust them as always to remain loyal to us. We have never really had any reason to doubt them. We pride ourselves on being an empire that is multicultural and multi-religion. Russia seems to be still expanding into the east. I like that. They're getting really strong. They are getting really, really strong. I don't like this. I'm thinking that perhaps we left it too late, that I should have blitzed technology at the beginning and then just left it. Because right now they're at 11, 13, 13, and we're at 13, 14, 14. That's, that's only a split of four. Although I suppose if they don't advance until after we've advanced admin technology, that might push them over. I think it's five levels of difference for you to begin uh, making it so that they can westernize, but I'm not entirely sure. Now I'm confused. So we should be done by about September 1563. I'm assuming that that's going to get pushed back a little bit because the number keeps moving. And let's set you up. Oh, and then we're on to the ones that are a little bit more difficult to convert. This is disappointing. But we're at 119% religious unity, and 119% religious unity is fairly significant. 
damn, these rebels might actually break the nation. I could... I could be very, very interested in seeing a Gotland that is a noble republic. There we go. It's basically, I, I think I may have explained this just before, but just in case I didn't actually finish the thought. It's kind of like a merchant republic is normally, but uh, in this particular case, uh, the, the merchant houses are replaced by noble houses, and they just swap. It's kind of like, actually, I guess, the closest equivalent to something people might be going, ha, ah, I know what that is. The closest equivalent is probably the Roman Republic because the noble houses would basically trade who was in charge in terms of the consulship and other important officers between themselves. So there you go, that's a comparison. So the treasury officers and tax... The, <laughs> the treasury officers and town halls. I don't know where I got taxes from there. Probably just because I was thinking about them. So let's research the technology. Towns have always been centers of trade, and due to their concentration of population, theoretically also great places to levy taxes. That's where I was getting at from. The problem is that the people, unlike land, have a tendency not to stay in the same place. Improving our ability to keep track of people will allow us to better our administration of cities, which allows another group of ideas, and we can build a town hall and a treasury. I think a treasury is actually one of those special, you can only have one buildings. No? It's an economic building. Okay. So, next on our list of things to be done and to get is going to be exploration. Get on it. Hell yes. So, we'll soon have a colonist, and I believe that a few of these islands are actually known to us. No? We know they exist, we just can't get onto them. They're terra incognita. But next time with me, Grey Hunter, we are going to start continuing our adventures into the next generation of people, I guess. I'm hoping that uh, the Anastasia dies off fairly quickly and Hadrian gets to have a nice long reign, but, you know, if all else fails. Oh yeah, did you get an heir? You did, okay. That's good. Oh wow. Wow, she died really fast. Damn. Inaugurated in 1561, so she must have had that kid just before she died. Wow. That's cool, but also kind of... Ugh. I'm sorry, Cecilia. I, I, I just wanted to, you know, put put my particular dynasty on your, on your realm's throne. I didn't want you to die. Well, that's a damn shame. That is a damn shame. So next time with me, Grey Hunter, we are going to continue our adventures in Europa Universalis 4, and we're going to begin expanding. We're going to start, well, we've been expanding a little bit, but we're going to begin expanding across the oceans there. The oceans blue. And galleons, perhaps. Can we actually build galleons? I, I don't know. That's a good question. Are galleons our thing? No, they're Karaks. But eventually they will be galleons. So next time with me, Grey Hunter. Thank you for watching.